Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar and workshop series conducted by TCS in lieu of the upcoming MCS exams happening in August 2024. My name is Nicholas and I'm one of the lead tutors and evaluators for MCS at TCS. So uh, let's look at the session outcomes. Uh, first things first, um, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, pre-seen application or how and when you are expected to bring in information from the pre-seen uh, with the intention of uh, improving the quality of your answers. So that's the first part. And in the second part, I will be taking you through an industry analysis so that you'd gain a better understanding about what this industry is all about, uh, what PBSAs are up to, and what type of uh, uh, changes are happening within the industry because based on these uh, trends as well as uh, changes within the industry, scenarios can be thrown at you at your real exam and in the third and final part uh, i will be taking you through the internal dynamics of uh, uh, flat hall thereby highlighting what the company is up to and on top of that i will also talk about uh, the value system adopted by the company uh, or the business values adopted by uh, flat hall so these are the elements which will be covered. So before we get into the technicalities, let me quickly remind you about the upcoming webinars and workshops uh, which we have scheduled for you. So um, all these uh, webinars and workshops will ensure that you get in touch with a tutor on a weekly basis, which is going to be extremely beneficial for you when it comes to uh, conducting your preparations uh, on a weekly basis. If you encounter any issues, you can get in touch with the tutor and keep track of your performance. And on top of that, um, you can gain an in-depth understanding about uh, uh, different elements, which are going to be extremely important for you at your MCS exam. So uh, out of the four webinars, uh, which we have scheduled, uh, the most important one is the third one, answering technique, which is happening next Saturday. 6th July at uh, 16 GMT. I hope you'd uh, attend it without fail because um, in this webinar, I will be teaching you answering and time management technique. Without these techniques, uh, uh, you cannot ensure that you uh, develop high quality answers which are totally aligned with the guidance provided by the CMA examiner. So, and on top of that, I will also highlight how and what you need to do to rebound from failure. Uh, if you had failed your MCS exam previously, and I will be uh, you know, sharing common reasons which leads to a failure. And for each of these reasons, I will be providing solutions. So I hope you'd attend the third webinar without fail. And in the fourth webinar exam prep, I will be taking you through examiner's comments so that you gain an understanding about what the examiner expects from you. And on top of that, I will also highlight what you need to do to uh, develop uh, a high level of uh, confidence leading up to your examination, because if you're confident, uh, you are halfway through. If you believe in yourself, uh, you can easily pass the MCS exam. And looking at the workshops, uh, each syllabus area uh, is covered within the three workshops which we have uh, scheduled. So in each workshop, I will take you through a mock exam question based on an E2, F2, or P2 related area, uh, thereby highlighting how to tackle uh, each type of question. And in the final workshop, which happens uh, two or three days before your examination, uh, I will be sharing last minute tips with you to make sure that you walk into your exam with a positive mindset. So uh, make sure to use, uh, uh, make use of these uh, free resources which we are offering uh, to you. And uh, we will be conducting these webinars and workshops on a weekly basis. Okay, so first things first, um, with regards to pre-seen application, what should you focus on? So first things first, you need to be conversant about all the information which appears within your uh, pre-seen document, such as uh, uh, the fact that Flat Hall is the largest PBSA, uh, which is based or uh, based in Toland. So likewise, you need to be extremely conversant with different types of information uh, presented in your pre-seen document. However, when uh, trying to remember the most relevant and most important uh, pre-seen information, uh, it's not going to be easy because, uh, you know, the pre-seen document goes on to uh, 25 to 30 pages. So it's not easy to read through the entire pre-seen document and understand which of the points are important to you and which of the points you can, you know, not remember. 
or, or forget about when conducting your preparation. So with that in mind, we have developed something called the annotated pre-scene. We have come up with tutor annotations uh, when conducting the pre-scene analysis. When I'm taking you through the internal dynamics of flat hole, I will be utilizing this annotated pre-scene. So once you have access to this annotated pre-scene, your life becomes extremely easy because you just need to read through the tutor annotations so that uh, you are in a position to really understand what's highlighted within the pre-scene document. And on top of that, we have uh, developed, you know, three TikTok videos, uh, which can be accessed via our TikTok handle. Uh, so via these three TikTok videos, we have, um, uh, you know, come up with a good mind map, which covers the entire pre-scene document. So within six minutes, six to seven minutes, you are in a position to go through the entire pre-scene and understand the most important points which you need to remember. So, um, you know, until your exam, if you keep watching these three TikToks over and over on a daily basis, then you need not worry about remembering what's highlighted within the pre-scene document because uh, by that time, you'd remember everything which is needed uh, for your examination. And you have to be conversant with the numbers as well because... Uh, as I highlighted in the first uh, uh, webinar, you are playing the role of a finance manager. So as a finance manager, you have to know your numbers. So you need to remember the key ratios. Again, we have made your life uh, uh, easy because we have developed a set of financial analysis slides. I will take you through these slides. I'll show you uh, what these slides look like uh, in a little while. So, uh, you know, once you go through these set of slides, you will be in a position to easily understand what happens in a financial sense within flat hall as well as its closest competitor because uh, when conducting evaluations we have considered both flat holes uh, financial statements as well as its closest competitor so all in all you need to uh, you know remember the key ratios and uh, if you go through our mock exams you will further understand uh, how to utilize these ratios when uh, or how to utilize these numbers when conducting your evaluations and you have to prepare for possible scenarios, yet be open-minded. So by attempting the uh, mock exams, which we have developed for you, you will gain an understanding about how each syllabus area is tested at the MCS exam. At the same time, you will uh, get accustomed to the type of uh, scenarios which can be tested at your real exam. So it's best that you uh, prepare for possible scenarios, yet just because you attempt the mock exams, you should not think that you are going to face uh, similar scenarios at your exam, uh, the information presented at the exam. We are not in a position to predict anything because uh, although we can predict the type of syllabus areas which can be tested, no one can predict the type of scenarios which can be you know, thrown at you. So it's best that you remain open-minded especially given the fact that the SEMA examine is trying to replicate a real life corporate environment. So it's as if at your exam, it's as if you're walking into office and, you know, opening your laptop or computer and going through your emails. Uh, so you would have received emails from your superiors. And for each email, you have to read through the information presented and based on this information, conduct your evaluations or provide recommendations. So, as a finance manager, you are not in a position to predict what flat hall is exposed to unless and otherwise you receive an email and go through all the information. So in the pre-seen document, the examiner gives you an indication about what has happened within flat hall in the past or what has affected the industry in the past as well as the financial statements provided are pertinent to the last two years. So you need to be conversant with what your company was up to in the past. However, you are not in a position to predict what the company is going to face in the future. So as a finance manager, since you are not in a position to predict the future of the company, you have to be open-minded to face any type of issue which is highlighted within, your, uh, uh, with, within the scenarios at your real exam. And remember that the scenario presented in the exam carries the latest information, as I mentioned earlier. So you are not in a position to predict the future of a company. Uh, if you look at real life, uh, uh, look at a real life corporate environment, you cannot predict what any company is going to face in the future. So you have to be open minded to face any type of information or face any type of issue or 
be exposed to any type of opportunity the company is trying to exploit. Okay. And when it comes to referring to pre-seen information, what are you expected to do? You are supposed to refer or cite in such a way that it adds value to your answer. So just because you bring in information from the pre-seen, you are not going to get marks. Instead, the type of information which you are bringing in should be relevant or aligned with the information presented in each and every scenario. So just because you bring in information and try to show to the examiner that you had gone through the pre-seen document, you won't get marks. Um, uh, or, or in other words, if you bring in irrelevant information from the pre-seen, or uh, the information uh, which you have brought in is not aligned with what's highlighted within uh, each scenario, then you won't get marks. So you need to bring in information, relevant information from the pre-seen with the uh, uh, idea of improving the quality of your answers. So you will understand how to do this in depth after you attend the third webinar where I will be taking you through an answering technique. And whilst uh, you know uh, explaining the answering technique, I will highlight what, uh, what type of pre-seen information should be brought in and how you are expected to do it. And uh, you can also gain an understanding about how to get this right uh, by uh, referring to the suggested answers and the answer plans of our mock exams, as well as watching the master classes which we have prepared for you. So all in all, in a nutshell, uh, if you want to bring in information from the pre-scene, always remember you have to do it with the intention of improving the quality of your answer. So any type of information which is brought in should be totally relevant to the scenario at hand. And uh, how are you supposed to approach E2, F2, and P2? Most students face this issue um, because um, if you had done your OTQs, uh, in your OTQ exams, the entire syllabus was tested. You had to do calculations and whatnot under your P2 and F2 syllabi. However, at the MCS exam, things are a bit different because as I mentioned in the first webinar, not just your theoretical knowledge is tested, your practical application skills are tested heavily as well. So if you are coming through the general route, if you had done your OCS exam, uh, you would have um, understood that the OCS exam is highly theoretical. However, at the MCS level, um, uh, the examiner is trying to figure out whether you have uh, uh, you know, practical application skills as well. Why? Because you are playing the role of a finance manager. So as a finance manager, you need to know your theories and you need to utilize this theoretical knowledge when conducting your evaluations and when providing recommendations. So prepare for application of theories and concepts. Uh, if you are clueless about what's highlighted within your E2, F2, and P2 syllabi, you cannot come up with the best evaluations. You cannot come up with the best type of recommendations. So you have to be extremely conversant with the entire uh, syllabus. You cannot leave out any of... Uh, uh, the syllabus content when preparing for your MCS exam and prepare for interpretation of figures and numbers. You are not expected to do major calculations at your exam. Instead, all the numbers will be provided to you um, as part of the scenario or as part of reference material. So you need to consider this information when developing your answers. So as a finance manager, that's exactly what you should expect in a real life corporate environment. You are not supposed to you know, uh, do NPV calculations, you know, because there are systems in place within any given organization, which makes our life easy. So at the OTQ exams, you had to do your, you know, NPV calculations, but not at the MCS exam. All the information will be presented. If uh, the examiner is testing your knowledge about investment appraisal, the examiner will give you, um, you know, information pertinent to a NPV. And based on the numbers presented, based on the information presented, uh, you have to develop your answers. So prepare for interpretation of figures and numbers. You are not expected to do major calculations. Then when preparing for your uh, NCS exam, do not skip any topic which uh, is highlighted within your E2, F2, and P2 syllabi. Because as I mentioned earlier, all the elements which are covered under these three pillars will be tested at your real examination. And do not rely on predictions because um, any area can be examined. I've uh, you know seen tutors uh, you know, 
telling students that they can forget about a certain syllabus element and you know certain syllabus elements will not be tested at the MCS exam. That is not the case. Any syllabus area can be tested at your MCS exam. So with this in mind, we have developed uh, you know our mock exams and when developing our mock exams, we have made sure to cover the entire syllabus uh, so that uh, you are not exposed to something new when attempting your real examination. So that should be your study plan for uh, the syllabus areas. Then I want to move on to uh, or proceed to the pre-scene analysis. Before I do that, let me quickly tell you what we offer at KCS. So I'm on the uh, MCS page. And if you're yet to create a free account and check our free content, click on this button and create a user account. And uh, once you had uh, created a user account, you will gain access to the student dashboard. And via the student dashboard, you will gain access to the recorded versions of the webinars and workshops, which we conduct on a weekly basis. And on top of that, you will gain access to a free mock exam, its suggested answer and the answer plan. And, uh, you know, since May, you have the op option of, or, or you have the opportunity rather of attempting the free mock exam under exam conditions via the exam platform. So make use of all these uh, free resources by creating your user account by clicking on this button. And if you are interested in investing on our paid content, before you do so, check our sample material simply by clicking on this button. And if you're yet to join our MCS WhatsApp group, click on this button to join it. Okay, so uh, talking about the two main packages which we offer, uh, we offer uh, the value pack and uh, the premium pack. So talking about the value pack, uh, this is designed for students who are coming through the SEMA general route uh, or those who had completed their OTQ exams pertaining to E2, F2 and P2. So since you have completed your OTQs, you already know theory. So when conducting preparations, your life is a bit easier compared to someone who is coming through an exemption route because you simply need to focus on improving your application skills since you already uh, have learned theory. So if you're coming through the general route, go for the value pack. The value pack comes with the recordings of all webinars and workshops which we conduct, the five mock exams with suggested answers. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, when developing these mock exams, we have made sure to cover the entire syllabus. And uh, this also comes with four pre scene analysis videos. After watching these four pre scene analysis videos, you will gain an in-depth understanding about uh, the internal and external dynamics of flat hall, as well as its financial performance. So uh, on top of that, the value pack comes with industry and financial analysis slides as well. Uh, in a little while, you will see uh, you know, what uh, is mentioned within our industry analysis slides. So you need not carry out your own research about the chosen industry. We have done it for you. So within 10 to 15 minutes after going through the set of slides which we have prepared, you can easily gain an understanding about what happens within your chosen industry. And uh, let me quickly show you what's uh, highlighted within the financial analysis slides. As I mentioned earlier, towards the very end of your pre-seen document, uh, financial statements of your chosen company and its closest competitor are provided. So we have evaluated each financial statement uh, by coming up with uh, tutor notations and uh, additionally, we have made sure to, uh, uh, you know, keep these annotations uh, simple as much as possible, concise as much as possible, so that you stand a chance to easily understand what's highlighted within each financial statement. So you can see that we have evaluated the SOPL, the SOFP, uh, and, you know, after evaluating these, uh, you know, financial statements, we have conducted a ratio analysis based on the company uh, uh, the performance of the company as well as its closest competitor. And we have evaluated each of these ratios again to ensure that you gain an in-depth understanding about the financial standing of your own company and its closest competitor. So as a finance manager, you need to be conversant with what happens within the industry because the type of evaluations, uh, when conducting evaluations and when providing recommendations, you need to be aware of how your decisions are going to impact the industry. So you need to be conversant with industry dynamics. And on top of that, you have to be, your decision should be totally aligned with the internal dynamics of the company. And whenever you are providing a decision, uh, it should make financial sense as well. So if you go through this set of slides, you'd gain 
uh, a good understanding about the industry of the company as well as its financial position. Then you'd also gain access to top 10 likely show slides, uh, which indicate the most uh, probable scenarios which can be thrown at you at your real exam. Uh, you'd also gain access to a case study familiarization kit after you know reading this uh, uh, or going through this familiarization kit. Within 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, you are in a position to gain an in-depth understanding about uh, the technicalities behind the MCS exam. You'd gain access to a tutor managed live chat and OTQ revision cards. So as I mentioned earlier, the value pack is designed for students who are coming through the general route. So after attempting each mock exam, if you feel that a certain syllabus area, uh, you need to rework on a, a certain uh, syllabus area, or you had forgotten a certain uh, syllabus area, simply refer to the OTQ revision cards so that you can easily brush up your knowledge pertaining to E2, F2, and P2 uh, syllabi. And the value pack is priced at 199 pounds. Then talking about the premium package, this is designed for students uh, who are coming through the exemption routes such as FLP and Gateway. So both these set of students have uh, uh, the same need. They need to learn theory. And at the same time, they need to understand how to apply theory considering the information presented in each scenario. Because uh, what I've encountered is most students who are coming through the uh, exemption routes, they are totally conversant with what's covered under the E2 syllabus, but there are significant knowledge gaps when it comes to P2 and F2 syllabi. So if you are not too aware about concepts which are taught under P2 and F2 syllabi, then you cannot pass the MCS exam. So with that in mind, we have come up with additional resources uh, with the intention of teaching you theory and te uh, at the same time, helping uh, you, know, you improve your application skills. So the premium package comes with everything which is uh, covered under the value pack. Additionally, you'd gain access to um, the online mock exam platform. So when attempting each of the mock exams, you can do it under exam conditions, thereby being exposed to exam stress. It's best to be uh, exposed to exam stress when conducting your preparations rather than at the exam. Because uh, if you're aware of uh, the type of exam stress or exam pressures you have to work with, then you will know what to do to overcome exam stress. And if you champion this technique, you can easily get rid of exam stress during your exam when uh, you know facing your real MCS exam. So, and on top of that, you will learn answering and time management techniques in our next webinar. And you can put these techniques into practice uh, by attempting each of our mock exams via the exam platform which we have prepared for you so that you have the capability of uh, attempting each mock under exam conditions. And you'd also receive one-on-one -on -one tutor feedback on mocks three, four, and five. Let me quickly show you the type of uh, tutor feedback which we provide at TCS. So as you can see, the entire answer script uh, had been evaluated in depth. And if there are shortcomings, we have highlighted them as uh, tutor notations. Um, and that's exactly what you can see throughout this answer script. And at the very end, overall comments uh, had been provided. Additionally, we have, uh, you know, we usually provide, uh, we always rather provide, uh, uh, you know, mark allocations on a subtask by subtask basis. And, uh, you know, we indicate a success rate as well. So you can see that certain subtasks are highlighted in yellow. These are the subtasks in which this student has not gained good marks. So when uh, conducting revision, rather than allocating three hours of your time once more and trying to reattempt the mock exam from scratch, you should solely focus on redeveloping answer plans focused on the subtasks in which your performance was low. That's the best type of revision you have to be involved with because uh, you know uh, your MCS exam is all about the way in which you structure your answers so if you get your answer structures or answer plans right, then you can easily pass your MCS exam. So uh, you can benefit from these type of resources if you invest on the premium package. And on top of that, you'd also gain access to answer plans of all five mock exams. So if I show you an answer plan, uh, this is what it looks like. So um, rather than you receiving uh, the mock exam along with its suggested answer, we have gone a step further and we are sharing answer plans with you. These are answer structures. So uh, after going through these answer plans or answer structures, you are in a position to easily understand how to structure each answer, 
the logic behind each answer, how theoretical elements should be brought in, and uh, how to work on your application scale. So all these things can be, uh, you know, achieved by going through going, going through the answer plans which we have provided. Okay, so we are providing answer plans for all the mock exams which we uh, uh, have made available for you, and it also comes with twenty master classes. So in each mock exam there are four tasks. So just like in your real exam, so four tasks into five mocks come up to twenty mass uh, twenty. Uh, tasks in total so focused on each task we have developed a master class and you know the objective of developing the master class is threefold first things first we want to ensure that you learn the logic behind each answer and at the same time we want to teach you theory and application skills so if you watch a master class you'd easily learn the logic behind each answer you'd easily learn theory and you'd easily improve application skills. As I mentioned earlier, if you are coming through an exemption route, you need to uh, understand how to develop answers. You need to learn theory and improve application skills. So you need not do, you know, refer to your um, past notes, your study texts and whatnot. You simply need to watch these master classes to learn theory and improve your application skills. And once you have access to all this content, uh, you will pass for sure. So that's exactly why we are providing a pass guarantee for the uh, uh, premium package. Uh, so what, what is this pass guarantee about? If you end up investing on the premium package, yet if you fail the exam, you will gain access to the premium package in your subsequent sitting free of charge. However, if you are to claim the pass guarantee, you have to complete these three requirements. You have to uh, complete all five mock exams if not, you are not in a position to be conversant with how each syllabus area is tested at your real exam. So in order to ensure that you cover the entire syllabus, you need to complete all five mock exams. And your solutions need to be original when uh, attempting each mock exam. There's absolutely no point of you going through the suggested answers, the answer plans or the master classes before attempting each mock exam. So it's best that you, uh, you know, uh, do an honest job. If so, you are in a position to really understand your shortcomings. And if you understand your shortcomings, you can avoid them when conducting your preparations. And you have to meet the performance criteria. Uh, the performance criteria is a situation where you need to gain 40% uh, or higher for mocks three, four, and five. Why have we come up with this uh, performance criteria to ensure that you do a serious job when attempting the last three mocks, especially given the fact that you are receiving tutor feedback for them. So if you complete these three requirements, there's absolutely no way you'd fail the MCS exam, given the type of resources which we offer under the premium package. So that's why it comes with a pass guarantee. So the price of the package is 749 pounds, which can be paid in two installments of 374 pounds each, or you can pay in full and save 100 pounds if that is the case. The price of the package will be just six hundred and forty-nine pounds. Uh, and let me quickly, uh, you know, take you through the, uh, you know, study plan. According to the study plan, we are in uh, week number two, and within this week, you are supposed to solely focus on the pre-seen document. So you are supposed to attend the second webinar, which you have done uh, already, and then watch the pre-seen analysis videos. Four videos in total. And on your own, you are supposed to refer to the annotated pre-scene and refer to the industry and financial analysis slides. So within this week, you know, you are not expected to do anything else. You need to watch the four pre-scene analysis videos, then refer to the annotated pre-scene financial analysis and industry analysis slides, which will take up roughly eight hours of your time. And from next week onwards, you need to start attempting mock exams. Okay, so that's... Uh, your study plan, that's what you are expected to achieve in the upcoming week. So having shared with you what we offer, let's move on to the pre-scene analysis. So as I mentioned earlier, first things first, I'm going to take you through uh, certain slides, uh, uh, you know, focusing on certain slides taken from our industry analysis slides. Then I will uh, move on to the pre-scene document, thereby highlighting the internal dynamics of flat hole. Okay, so... Uh, first things first, it's best that you understand uh, what uh, this market is about, or uh, it's best that you understand the definition of your chosen market. So this time's uh, pre-seen, MCS pre-seen is based on 
purpose-built student accommodation market or PBSAs. So what are PBSAs? So these are residential buildings specially constructed to provide accommodation for university or college students. So, you know, whenever a student enrolls with a university or college, uh, they might be moving, uh, you know, away from their hometowns. If that is the case, they need to look into, you know, finding accommodation. So fulfilling this need is the main role of a PBSA. And these uh, type of PBSAs are typically located near educational institutions. Why? Because uh, the PBSAs are built, uh, focused on or aimed at uh, university students. So these PBSAs should be in close vicinity to a university so that uh, university students can easily uh, move back and forth from the PBSA uh, to their university. And PBSAs are tailored to provide a conducive environment for student living. So you, you uh, students, we have, since we are attracting students, we have to make sure that uh, they have uh, enough and more resources to help them conduct their studies without any hiccups. So we have to uh, be conversant about noise and whatnot, or whether there are unnecessary disturbances within the PBSA. So that's one element uh, any given PBSA should focus on. And uh, PBSAs are gaining popularity in recent years due to their convenience, modern, modern um, uh, facilities, as well as uh, the focus on student needs. So if a PBSA is to be successful, then they need to offer convenience, additional resources or facilities, and try to satisfy the students as much as possible. So in order to understand student needs, it's best that you communicate with uh, uh, the students who are your customers on a regular basis. If so, you are in a position to satisfy their needs. So that is what this market is all about. So let's try to figure out uh, what type of alternatives are there, uh, uh, you know, uh, compare, compared to PBSAs. So there are halls of residence provided by the universities. So, you know, some universities uh, provide accommodation uh, not in its entirety. So for instance, there is, uh, uh, let's assume uh, uh, there is a university uh, which attracts, uh, you know, 1000 students per semester. However, when providing halls of residence or when providing accommodation within the university itself, you won't have uh, the resources to provide uh, accommodation or fulfill accommodation needs of 1000 individuals. Instead, you'd only have accommodation for 100 or 200 students. So halls of residence are residential buildings provided by the universities and colleges to accommodate their students. And these are typically located within campus or near campus. And as I mentioned earlier, the demand for them often exceed the supply because uh, halls of residence is the most convenient type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, accommodation a student can opt for. However, uh, given the limitedness uh, of supply, students, uh, once the halls of residencies are full, uh, the students will have to opt for a PBSA or they might utilize uh, services provided by uh, private individuals as well. So private rentals are there. These are homes or flats rented out by private landlords to students. So these are the alternatives uh, at a student's disposal. The highest amount of demand is for halls of residence. However, given uh, a lack of supply, uh, students have to turn to private rentals and PBSAs. Okay, so what type of facilities are offered by PBSAs? So there are study areas, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, any PBSA should create a conducive uh, environment which helps students, uh, you know, fulfill their education needs. So there are study areas uh, and you should have uh, usually, you know, uh, top-notch PBSAs have high-speed internet because uh, the students uh, will need internet in this day and age to conduct uh, their, uh, you know, or fulfill their educational needs. And security features should be there as well because uh, you are dealing with uh, students. So when dealing with students, you have to ensure that uh, uh, you, uh, the premises are secured at all times. And we have, we need to have uh, appropriate security guards and whatnot, security, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, technology as well to ensure that we safeguard uh, uh, all of uh, the residents who are uh, utilizing our services and PBSAs have fitness centers as well. 
and uh, as well as laundry facilities and kitchen facilities. And for uh, these type of added facilities, some PBSAs uh, charge an additional fee. And there are ensuite bathrooms as well. Uh, usually an, uh, a PBSA might have a, a, you know, a common bathroom, but um, some uh, PBSAs offer private bathrooms at a higher rate. And uh, there are social spaces or common areas. Then you need to fo be focused on managing your PBSA or your property. So you need to have on-site management as well as staff members to look into um, on-site management as well as conduct cleaning activities and utilities are provided and there are in certain PBSs there are outdoor spaces as well. So all these facilities are offered with the intention of satisfying uh, uh, the students as much as possible. And let's uh, try to figure out the industry trends. Uh, there is a growing demand for PBSs, uh, uh, especially given the fact that the demand for you know education is uh, improving, increasing. So with that, the demand for student accommodation increases as well, especially focused on international students. And there are because of this growing demand, uh, so many uh, companies such as private equity firms and real estate uh, companies are coming into this market. Uh, they are building up their own PBSs. And uh, you can see a diversification of offering as well. So different types of room types are provided by PBSs out there because uh, uh, you need to address the differing needs of the student population. So there are studio apartments, shared apartments, ensuite rooms and whatnot, and different type of facilities are provided. Uh, and you know um, all these things uh, need significant investments. And with that, your knowledge pertinent to, uh, you know, how to conduct such an investment will be tested at your examination. And on top of that, um, you know, most PBSAs uh, try to partner up with universities because if you uh, partner up with universities, you can get a steady influx of uh, students into your PBSAs. And as I mentioned earlier, most PBSAs focus on offering um you know, uh, high-speed internet as well as uh, offering the best type of technology in order to attract and retain students. And uh, there is a rise of hybrid models as well. Some PBSAs are not just selling uh, their services or not just providing their services to students. They are providing services to uh, digital nomads as well, thereby, uh, you know, creating co-working spaces. Uh, uh, so they are addressing the needs of students as well as young professionals. So these are the industry trends and based on these industry trends, scenarios can be thrown at you at your real exam. So I've uh, partially taken you through our final, uh, sorry, uh, industry analysis slides. Uh, I hope you gained an understanding about uh, what happens within this chosen industry. I uh, invite you to go through the entire document to gain an uh, understanding, in-depth understanding about what happens within this uh, industry. So having said that, I'm moving on to uh, evaluating the internal dynamics of flat hole. So this company was founded in 1994. So we have been in operation for the past 30 years, which is a significant strength. And on top of that, uh, you know, at the moment, we own 174 buildings and we have the capability of acc accommodating 78,000 students in total. So that is our current capacity. And on top of that, uh, we were listed on the Toll Indian Stock Exchange since uh, 2002. So this indicates that we have been trading in the stock market, uh, the local stock market for the past 22 years. Again, a significant strength. So when you are a listed company, you have uh, access to equity financing, not just debt financing, you have access to equity financing. And on top of that, you can use this uh, to you know, enhance your reputation uh, and attract you know, um, uh, a steady inf influx of customers. And uh, Flat Hall competes with other PBSA providers. And when we are competing, we try to focus on quality of service and promotion. So these are our critical fact success factors. So if we provide a high quality service, then it's easy to attract clients and on top of that, retain them. And, uh, you know, we are conducting our promotion as well. So we try to excel in the way in which we promote our services, promote our brand. And when conducting promotions, 
uh, you know, we utilize a referral system. So if we are to get more students via referrals, then we have to treat our existing, um, you know, clients in the most effective manner. Uh, if so, we are in a position to, you know, attract um, uh, new customers as well as retain the existing customers uh, who are university students. So it's of utmost importance. You need to remember that we get our quality, we, that we focus on our quality of service and the effectiveness in which we conduct our promotions. And there is very little difference between rents charged by different PBSs, which indicates that there aren't any price wars among competitors, which is good for the entire industry. Because we are, if we are exposed to price wars, then it will impact our margins in an adverse manner. So when there is no price war, how will these guys uh, compete? They compete on quality and the way in which they promote themselves. And uh, um, all places are filled well before the start of the academic year. So this indicates that, uh, you know, there aren't any vacant, uh, um, you know, uh, rooms within our PBSS, which indicates that the demand for our PBSS uh, exceed the supply. So based on this information, you can determine the type of uh, exam scenarios which can be uh, thrown at you at your real exam. So definitely there will be a scenario pertaining to uh, flat hole constructing a new PBSA. So when constructing a new PBSA, you have to conduct an investment appraisal to see whether it's going to be beneficial for us constructing a certain PBSA, whether it's going to be beneficial for us um, in a financial sense. So your knowledge pertaining to investment appraisal, which falls under your P2 syllabus will be tested. Then we are exposed to a plethora of risks when uh, trying to set up a new PBSA. So considering the information presented in each scenario, you are expected to spot business risks. And after sp spotting business risks, you are supposed to come up with uh, mitigatory action or recommend mitigatory action in order to avoid uh, each of the business risks which you'd uh, uh, identify. So your knowledge pertaining to risk management, which again falls under your uh, P2 syllabus, will be tested at your exam. And when you know constructing a new PBSA, uh, we have to find money. So your knowledge pertaining to the way in which we are supposed to find our money, should we opt for debt? Should we opt for equity? So based on these two uh, you know, funding options, you are expected to conduct your evaluations and recommend the best source of funding whenever we are you know, putting up a new PBSA. So your knowledge pertaining to uh, financing sources, which uh, falls under your F2 syllabus will be tested. And when constructing a PBSA, we have to deal with a lot of resources, timelines. We have to ensure that we achieve the required level of quality. Um, and at the same time, we have to deal with uh, a lot of stakeholders as well. So knowledge pertaining to project management, which falls under your E2 syllabus will be tested. And on top of that, when putting up a new PBSA, we have to deal with uh, a multitude of stakeholders. And on top of that, we have to recruit uh, on-site management staff, uh, our you know maintenance staff, uh, security guards, uh, concierge uh, service providers and whatnot. So your knowledge pertaining to human resources management will also be tested at your exam. So uh, definitely there will be a question about flat hall constructing a new PBSA and all these elements, mind you, are covered within our mock exams. And uh, talking about the rents, rents do vary between cities uh, where, um, you know, in a capital city, the rent will be 20% higher than a PBSA, which is located within uh, a central city. Why is this the case? Because uh, usually there is a high demand for students to be uh, involved with uh, universities in a capital city. So with that, we will be charging a high price because uh, um, the real estate is uh, uh, pricey when it comes to a central city relative to some other rural uh, area. Okay, so that's about uh, what we have been up to in the past. So let's look at our two main elements we are involved with building operations as well as promotions. So these are the two main business uh, activities which we carry out. So let's try to figure out what we do under each of these two categories. So when, in, when running our building operations, uh, we have to ensure that flat halls buildings are within 20 minutes travel from 
uh, at least one institution's campus based on walking distance or public transport. Why is this the case? As per uh, the internal dynamics, we are attracting a set of students who are, you know, um, trying to fulfill their educational needs. So in such an environment, we have to make sure that the students can easily, uh, you know, go from our PBSA to their uh, relevant university within a short period of time. And Flat Hall pays close attention to the availability of potential sites for new business. So when conducting building operations, we are not only into managing our existing properties, we are constantly on the lookout for new properties, especially given the fact that the demand for PBSA is PBSAs are growing as per what I highlighted uh, uh, as part of the industry analysis. So we have to look at the availability of new sites so that we can put up new PBSs and cities that have large student populations and will act quickly to purchase suitable sites before they can be acquired by competitors. So we are always on the lookout for new plots of land to put up PBSs uh, so that we can uh, provide services to the uh, growing demand for PBSs within this market. So a proactive approach uh, is adopted, which enables Flat Hall to sustain its market leader position um, by doing these things. Then um, let's look at how a typical flat is uh, laid out. So you, as you can see, there are several different rooms within a flat and there is a communal area which is connected with uh, the bedrooms. And on top of that, there are a set of uh, bathrooms as well, common bathrooms. So, however, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you look at the industry dynamics, uh, certain uh, uh, PBSs offer uh, ensuite uh, bathrooms as well. So that is uh, typically how a single flat is uh, uh, designed. And as you can see, if you look at the flow plan, it consists of different types of flats within the same flow. So you can see uh, a common uh, you know, uh, design element where you get a set of uh, bedrooms which are attached to a, a common uh, a communal area as well as a common set of uh, bathrooms. So you are not supposed to, as the finance manager of the company, you are not supposed to be really conversant with the layout of each and every PBSA. That's not your role. The examiner has provided this information so that you gain a general general understanding about how Flat Hall conducts its operations. And uh, all these buildings have fully equipped laundry rooms with automatic uh, washing machines and dryers, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, these are the additional facilities offered by typical PBSs. And uh, the machines are equipped with card readers that enable students to pay for uh, the use of these fa facilities using credit or debit cards. So this is an additional revenue stream uh, which we benefit from. And on top of that, uh, flat halls buildings are kept secure to pro uh, protect residents and their property. Access is restricted by key cards. So uh, we are adhering to higher standards of security, uh, which is considered as a significant strength when you look at uh, uh, the dynamics within this industry. So we are dealing with a set of students. And as I mentioned earlier, security, ensuring the security of uh, the st uh, student population is extremely uh, important. So with that in mind, we have invested on state-of-the-art equipment uh, in order to secure our residents. And uh, on top of that, we are providing concierge service as well. So each building has a team of concierges uh, who work in shifts. So definitely your knowledge pertaining to managing uh, human resources will be tested uh, in your examination. And on top of that, apart uh, uh, looking at the uh, primary responsibilities of the concierge uh, service providers, the primary role is to provide safety and security. However, apart from safety and security, the concierges act as a point of contact for students because as I mentioned earlier, keeping track of the needs of these students is uh, essential if you are to uh, be successful within this industry. So that's uh, exactly what the concierge uh, employees are supposed to achieve. And we have to make sure that we employ competent and friendly staff to ensure excellent uh, service provision for students. So there will be a question, there might be a question about us recruiting uh, someone and when recruiting someone, how to conduct uh, the uh, HR related elements uh, or the recruitment process, all these uh, will be tested at your exam. 
and uh, the concierges are responsible for enforcing rules relating to residents' behavior. And concierges will deal with unsociable uh, behavior such as playing loud music. So definitely there will be uh, an exam scenario about disputes between these concierge employees and students. If so, your knowledge pertinent to conflict resolution, the way in which we are supposed to conduct communication, as well as the type of disciplinary action which we should take uh, you know, against our employees who breach, uh, you know, standards of behavior. All these elements will be tested at your exam. And we have a set of uh, cleaners within each uh, building as well. These are our own employees. And when it comes to uh, handling repairs and maintenance activities, we seek services provided by independent contractors. So maintenance and repairs, have we, we have outsourced them, whereas um, we have our own set of concierge employees and uh, um, uh, cleaning employees. And rental agreements termina terminate at the end of the second semester. So uh, this indicates that students vacate the PBSS uh, by the end of the second semester in April. Why is this the case? Because uh, there is a semester break for summer. So because of that, uh, usually all PBSS close up in the uh, second semester, after the second semester is done. And before the next semester starts, you have some time at your disposal and within this time period, uh, Flathole uh, invests on upgrading the facilities or maintaining the facilities in order to ensure that we provide the best type of services. Uh, we provide updated technology to our customers. Each building is given a thorough cleaning during that time. The interior uh, of the buildings are redecorated so they are fresh and inviting for students. This attention to detail is one of the factors that enables Flathole to compete with rival PBSA providers. So this attention to detail is considered as one of our critical success factors. And uh, that's about the way in which we uh, uh, conduct our business or the way in which we conduct our operations. Then talking about uh, the second element which we need to get right, which is about promoting. So. When promoting our brand and the type of services we offer, we mainly use our website. So via the website, we are offering all different types of information about the type of uh, services we offer, the type of facilities we offer. And on top of that, we have, uh, you know, we provide uh, the possibility of students to book a place via our website. So when booking a place in advance, uh, you have to uh, uh, pay a booking fee or, or uh, you have to make an initial payment. So uh, this initial payment can be done via our website. So it's of utmost importance since we are providing information as well as we are, since we are handling a portion of our business with regards to pre-booking, it's of utmost importance that we uh, develop a user-friendly and all-encompassing website, uh, which is vital to attract students um, and to disseminate uh, information to them. So that's one element and flat hall will refund initial payments. I said that uh, students have uh, the capability of uh, booking a place before, uh, you know, um, coming into the PBSA via our website. So sometimes students will not turn up even after booking a place, they will not turn up due to a multitude of reasons. It could be a scenario that a certain student, uh, you know, fails the receipt exam if uh, an individual fails the receipt exam, they cannot uh, continue studies in the next semester. So if that is the case, even if a student books a place, he or she will not turn up. And on top of that, uh, when dealing with international students, uh, you know, not all international students will get visas. So if their visas get rejected, then they will not take up a place within a PBSA. So if you are exposed to such a situation, we have to uh, refund the initial payments. So your knowledge pertinent to accounting for refunds, which uh, falls under your F2 syllabus, will definitely be tested at the exam. So all in all, we conduct our promotions mainly via our website. And on top of that, we play a, a pivotal role or, or an active role within freshers' fairs as well. So these freshers' fairs are conducted by the universities. So by you know putting up our stalls and uh, talking to students we can directly get in touch with potential customers who will take up uh, their residence within our pbsa and within these freshers fairs uh, in order to man uh, the uh, stalls uh, we utilize our 
existing customers who had been you know utilizing our services they are the best type of uh, uh, individuals to approach and uh, recruit new students and on top of that we conduct our own open days as well so that um, anyone who is interested in uh, utilizing our services can gain an understanding about uh, the type of facilities uh, we offer at a flat hall pbsa and uh, small groups of students uh, provide guided tours and these students uh, are the existing customers. So it's of utmost importance that we treat our existing customers well. If not, within the uh, when we are conducting an open day, uh, some might, someone might say something bad about us. If that is the case, we cannot uh, recruit new customers to our PBSs. So a high level of satisfaction among current students is essential to receive a positive customer referral. So all in all, when conducting our pro uh, promotions, we utilize our website. We uh, you know, make use of uh, stalls put up uh, within Freshers' Fairs, as well as we conduct our open days. And uh, uh, you know, in these open days, as well as Freshers' Fairs, we uh, rely on referrals. Okay, so that gives us an indication about the internal dynamics uh, of the company in order to gain an in-depth understanding about uh, uh, what happens within several different departments, uh, what happens within the board of this company, I invite you to watch the four pre-scene analysis videos which we have uh, developed for you. Uh, before we um, you know, uh, finish the pre-scene analysis, let me quickly take you through the business model of the company because definitely this uh, knowledge which is covered within your E2 syllabus will be tested at your real exam. So based on the information provided about the business model of Flat Hall, uh, we can easily determine the critical success factors. So uh, there are three main critical success factors. Number one is achieving utmost levels of quality. Number two is about maintaining and improving our brand reputation. And number three is uh, with regards to uh, developing relationships with institutions such as colleges and universities. Because uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you look at the real life industry dynamics, uh, players within the PBSA industry always uh, try to create, uh, you know, positive relationships with universities and colleges. So this element is part of, uh, or one of our critical success factors as per our business model. So as you would have learned under your E2 syllabus, uh, any business model usually comprise of uh, four main elements. That's exactly what you can see here. We are focused on defining value. Then we try to create value so that uh, we fall in line with the value definition. Then we have to come up with ways uh, uh, and means um, uh, which we should adopt when it comes to delivering value. And we have to be conversant about how we are sharing a residual value with our stakeholders as well. So first things first, let's look at defining value. So when thinking about a value definition, we always have to address two questions. Uh, firms look at who they create value for and what counts as value in the eyes of our customers. So for whom are we creating value? For students and in the eyes of our students or our customers, what are they looking for with regards to value? They are looking for a safe and attractive, uh, they are looking for safe and attractive accommodation and they are uh, on the lookout for a relaxed environment which will help them with their studies. So this is the way in which we try to define value. We are trying to create value focused on students and how would students define value? They look for safe and attractive accommodation as well as a relaxed environment to study. Then based on this value definition, we have to determine how we are expected to create value. So when creating value, firms look at how resources are sourced and how we utilize these resources thereby giving the best type of output to our customers. So how are you supposed to create value? So we try to be proactive in identifying potential sites for new properties. So as I mentioned earlier, if we are to satisfy the needs of customers, we have to always be on the lookout for new opportunities within the market. So with this in mind, with the intention of creating value to uh, uh, our customers who are students, our um, company is focused on proactively identifying potential sites. And on top of that, with this in mind, we uh, try to recruit expertise in the acquisition of suitable sites. 
So we are trying to create value by uh, finding the best type of sites out there. And in order to find the best sites, we need to recruit experts in the area. So that's how we try to create value. And when it comes to value delivery, uh, we try to, any given company tries to uh, find ways to uh, you know generate value. So with the intention of uh, delivering value, Flathole focuses uh, mainly on developing strong relationships with universities and colleges. So in order to generate strong relationships, they are working hand in hand with uh, uh, college and un university accommodation services. And on top of that, uh, they try to understand the exact needs of residents as well, because most of the residents, uh, they return when they return for studies uh, uh, in uh, different semesters. If they are satisfied with the type of services we offer, then they'd keep utilizing our services. And on top of that, uh, I was uh, speaking about the way in which we conduct our promotions. Uh, one element of conducting promotions is pertinent to referrals. So if you are to get uh, positive referrals, then definitely we have to treat our existing customers properly. So when it comes to value delivery, we are looking at three main stakeholders, uh, developing strong relationships with colleges as well as university uh, ac accommodation service providers. And on top of that, we are concerned about the way in which we treat our customers. And if we deliver value appropriately, it will result in residual value. What is re residual value? This is, this is value captured when revenue from delivering value exceeds the cost of creating value. So if we generate an additional revenue by providing value, this is known as this uh, excess is known as uh, residual value. And this surplus or this excess, if we share it with our main stakeholders, then it will lead to further or additional business in the future. So how are we sharing this additional uh, value which we uh, you know, uh, generate with our stakeholders? The main stakeholder which we are focused on is again our students. So uh, students are prepared to pay realistic rents for flat hall because of the type of services we offer. And in return, they are provided with all the facilities they require to support their studies and social activities. So by sharing residual value, we are trying to, you know, uh, align ourselves with the value definition, which is focused on student needs. What type of needs are we talking about? Having a safe and attractive, uh, having access to safe and ac attractive accommodation and having a relaxed environment to study. So this is the way in which we are conducting business. So at your examination, your knowledge pertaining to um, the business ecosystem will definitely be tested. So there could be a scenario which highlights uh, some type of um, an opportunity which we are trying to exploit or some type of an issue flat hole is facing at the moment, which changes uh, the way in which we conduct business. And if such a question is thrown at you, you have to consider the information presented in the scenario about the current business model which we adopt and the way in which we should change our business model. Okay, so we have uh, developed a similar question which appears within our mock exams. So all in all, uh, I hope you gained an understanding about the uh, industry dynamics as well as uh, the internal dynamics of uh, flat hall in order to, as I mentioned earlier, in order to gain an in-depth understanding about the industry the internal dynamics of uh, flat hall as well as its financial performance i invite you guys to watch the four pre seen analysis videos which can be accessed via the value and premium packages okay so um having said that we are happy to announce that we achieved a 91 percent pass rate for uh the february sitting uh you know some of you were asking about uh, these uh, facts and figures uh in the previous uh webinar so i shared them via the whatsapp group and having said that if you have any questions you can raise your questions now you can switch on your mic and talk or drop a message via the chat i'm going to pause the recording uh folks thank you very much for those questions uh, as well as uh, the feedback i hope i addressed all your concerns and um, if you want to contact us, uh, I invite you to do so via our website, which is www.studyattcs.com. Simply go to our website and click on the contact button. 
and you'd be uh, directed to the contact area. And uh, once you drop a message, uh, our admin staff will get in touch with you via email. And if you want to email us, you can do so via infratstudy at tcs.com or WhatsApp us on this number. Um, I invite you to follow us on our YouTube channel as well as uh, uh, our TikTok handle, uh, especially given the fact that the recorded versions of these webinars and workshops will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. Additionally, as I mentioned earlier, via the TikTok handle, you will gain access to uh, mind map three set of videos, uh, which is a good mind map of the entire pre-scene. So until your exam, keep watching these TikToks uh, over and over again. If so, you need not uh, do anything else to uh, remember or memorize what appears within your pre-scene document. So having said that, it brings us to the end of uh, today's webinar. I hope you gain an in-depth understanding about the company as well as its uh, industry dynamics in order to gain an in-depth understanding I want you to, or in order to gain a better understanding about all elements covered within uh, the pre-scene document, I invite you to watch the pre-scene analysis videos. And as I mentioned earlier, this week should be dedicated towards understanding your pre-scene. Uh, so with that in mind, if you complete all um, you know uh, requirements, which I highlighted uh, uh, under the study plan, then from next week onwards, you can start attempting mock exams. So. Um, I invite you guys to attend next Saturday's webinar and after learning answering and time management techniques, put these techniques into practice when attempting each of your mock exams. So do not attempt the free mock exam via the exam platform within this week. Instead, wait until the answering and time management techniques are taught. Then you'd uh, significantly benefit by having access to the exam platform. So thank you very much. I'll see you guys next week. Take care and good night.